Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Joey's Scarf. This is episode 21. Today is Monday, February 18th, 2018. Um, I, my name is Linda. You, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Linda Grace, and that's Linda with a Y. I think um, I'm going to be recording alone today. Ross is busy, I guess, doing other things. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I recorded last, and uh, the last time we recorded, we were uh, trying to figure out what was wrong with um, our little Maltese Rico. And since then, we've had him back and forth to the vet uh, about four times. Uh, they've tried we've tried everything um his behavior maybe i'll put a little video in here <laughs> he's very unhappy i don't know if you can hear him he's laying down here by me and he's moaning and groaning uh, which is still continuing um, we thought it might have been a skin condition that's driving him crazy, so we tried steroids. Um, that didn't resolve the issue. Uh, the doctor then looked in his mouth and saw that he had a couple of teeth that were not in good shape and thought that maybe that was causing him issues, so he had his teeth pulled. and. Of course, he had to be sedated, had his teeth pulled and cleaned, and I thought I was hoping that that would be it, and unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, so we took him back again. I keep looking because I keep hearing Ross. Um, we took him back again, and uh, the the vet, Dr. Behan, was pretty um, at his wits end, he really couldn't figure out what was going on with Rico. Uh, he said, well, let me just look in his ear. So we looked in his ears and he took a culture and he said, uh, came back and he said, I have good news, he has an ear infection, which kind of sounds kind of funny, but um, it was at least something, a diagnosis. So we, he gave him, he actually put some eardrops in his ears, an antibiotic and a, a, a steroid. And he, we, we were hoping that that would help Rico. And that was on Friday. Today is Monday. And we've been giving him the drops a couple of times, two twice a day, and he still is not a happy camper. One of the things we discovered, though, was that the airdrops were supposed to have been refrigerated and we were not refrigerating it, the drops. So today we called the vet and asked for a new prescription and we're going to give this another go and see if, uh, if it really is an ear infection. I have a feeling that it's not. So I don't know what our next um, option is going to be. I don't know what more they can do or what more they can look for. He's had blood tests and everything, and that everything seemed to come out okay. And it's, it's very, very upsetting um, to see Rico in such distress. It breaks my heart. Haven't really felt like um, doing a podcast. Um, been, all my attention really has been focusing on him and trying to keep him comfortable. But I wanted to stop in today and uh, I have some things to show you and some things to talk about. So I'm going to get on with the show. Okay, first things first. Last uh, podcast that I did was my one year podiversary. And I ran a little contest um, to name my three sheep that are sitting back there. And I had uh, 19 entries, and some of the no names were really cute. Um, 
I'm going to put the names of, of all of, of everybody that everybody thought of in my in the show notes because some of them were adorable. But we did a random number generator on the 19 entries, and um, the winner of the name My Sheep contest is Sheila from Blue, her, her Ravelry name is Blue Yarn Always. So congratulations, Sheila. You won the name of the sheep, name the sheep contest. And her, the names that she picked were Larry, Curly, and Mo. How great is that? So though, that's, uh, the, she, Sheila was the winner. And uh, I appreciate everybody who participated. It was a lot of fun and I enjoyed reading all of the, all of the names that you all came up with. Sheila, I wanted to show you what I'm going to be sending you. Um, I'm assuming, because since your name is Blue Yarn Always, that blue is your favorite color. So this is a skein of Toad Hollow yarn. Yeah. And it's from their um, Narnia collection. And this one is, the colorway is called Queen Susan. Um, it's really pretty. Um, and it's on their Drusilla base, and it's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and it's 400 yards to ply. And to go along with it, because it's a name the sheep contest, is this little, um, little yarn bag for your, uh, keep your, your yarn in here. And uh, this is this design is um, this is called a, a ball bag, and it's by uh, Knit for Brains Designs, and um, I ordered that from them. And this is really cute, and it holds one ball of yarn nicely. So Sheila, this will be on your way uh, if you can contact me and send me your in your shipping information and I'm going to try and contact you too. I'll try and I'll contact you on Ravelry to get your information. So that's the name of the sheep contest. Okay, so let's talk some knitting. I have a couple of finished objects. First one is a, um, this pattern is called the regular guy beanie. I had made a couple um, one for my son for Christmas, and then he asked if I could make his friend one, which I did. And I figured I would make another one just to keep on hand in case uh, he had another friend who would want one. So again, the pattern is a regular guy beanie, and it, it apropos for its name because it's just a no-nonsense guy's hat. You know, it just fits snug on their head, real plain, and... Uh, my son seems to love his, and I think his friend likes his too. Um, the yarn, really nice, nice yarn. It's 100% uh, merino wool. It's worsted weight, um, and it's by um, Crystal Skies Hand Dyed, and it's Donna Marie Hurley is the dyer. And this color is called Sterling Silver. And this is, I had quite a bit left. The regular guy beanie doesn't take up, doesn't use much yarn at all. Um, and again, this is 100% superwash merino. Um, very, very nice. It blocked beautifully. And I really like the way it came out. Number three, I should like the way it comes out by now, right? But it's a simple knit. If you have a guy in your life that just wants a plain hat, it's, it's a great pattern. Okay, the other couple of finished objects, all similar. Um, I decided, I saw on Instagram that um, uh, Amber from The Yarn Hoarder is doing a little, uh, she's doing a dishcloth challenge, and the challenge is to make one dishcloth a week. So by the end of the year, you'll have about 52 dishcloths. Um, to give out as, as Christmas gifts or, <coughs> hello Rico, or to hand out to family members. And I'll tell you, the dishcloths, I don't use sponges. Um, this is what I use to wash my dishes, 
to wipe the counters. Um, they're terrific, 100% um, cotton. I throw them in the, in the washer and dryer. They last forever and uh, save on buying extra stuff, paper goods or paper towels or, or sponges. And I think they're cleaner, cleaner. They, you know, because I wash them so often and I can just toss them in the washer and dryer. And because they're nubby, they really clean the counters and the dishes very well. So anyway, I decided I would, it, it's, I need some new ones, even if I don't complete the 50, I don't know what I would do with 52 of them, but um, it's just a fun project because they're quick to do, they're fun to do, and there's all sorts of uh, patterns on Ravelry with all different kinds that you can make. You can crochet them, knit them. So I did a couple. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm going to make a dishcloth and a matching pot holder to go along with it. So I thought that would be a nice gift for someone. Mm -hmm. And this dishcloth is, the pattern is, I think, Grandma's favorite dishcloth. Very uh, free pattern on Ravelry. It's uh, one that I think everyone uses. A lot of people use this simple, very simple pattern, knitted, it's knitted. And the yarn is uh, Hobby Lobby's yarn, which is really soft, um, and I, I, I really like it. Uh, and then I made the a matching pot holder, um, and the pot holder is crocheted, and it's kind of a unique um, design because you, uh, the way that you crochet it, the increases and decreases, it kind of folds in on itself, and it makes a double thickness pot holder and don't remember the name of the pattern but I will put it in the show notes or across the screen so that was one set then the next set I did was this is a pattern that when I first started knitting I decided I wanted to design something so I thought well, what would be the easiest thing to do would be to design a washcloth pattern so this is the one I did and it's got the hearts and then this is supposed to be the letter G for my our last name didn't come out very good it probably doesn't even look like a G kind of it's supposed to go like that and the hearts I don't know what I was doing these hearts are open these are kind of filled in uh, <laughs> I came across the pattern when I was looking for dishcloth patterns and I, I saw this one and I had charts and all of this stuff and eh, I'd give it a try and I think I would could do better now <laughs> but anyway it's cute I like the color uh, this is probably um, uh, sugar and what's the name of it uh, sugar and cream uh, cotton from Michaels or AC Moore one of those and then again, here is the same dishcloth or pot holder pattern. And I used, uh, started off with this color, which was, rent, you know, what I had left after I made the dishcloth and didn't have enough. So I just filled it in with some white. So that's my second set. And then the third one was this one I made um, with a crow hook, which looks like this. I don't know if you're familiar with crow with a with the crow hooking method of crochet, um, but it allows you to have uh, a reversible pattern with you know a different color on each side and I and then this is the matching pot holder for that one so that's the third set now the crow hook um, I put a little um, a little demonstration of how I made this it's not very professional uh, I just kind of wanted to show you if you're not familiar with crow hooking uh, what it looks like to crow hook and uh, 
So I'm going to insert this little video here now for you to watch and forgive my amateur <laughs> tutorial, but it's, it's really not a tutorial. It's just, um, I just wanted to show you what it looks like to crow hook. Um, so here, watch the video and then I'll be back. Okay, so I just wanted to show you how I made this uh, dishcloth. Um, I'm participating in the Yarn Hoarders uh, Dish Cloth Challenge. And this one was made with a crow hook. Um, and the crow hook looks like this. And it's a crochet hook, a long crochet hook that has a hook on either end. Um, there are some YouTube t tutorials that show you how to use this. Um, I found a pattern on Ravelry to make a dish cloth using the crow hook. And uh, the name of the pattern I'm going to use is called Double Dish Cloth, and it's by Mar Marlo Karens, but I'll put all that in the show notes. I'm going to be using these two colors today. When you use a crow, crow hook, you, uh, are, you use two colors, and that, that gives you the double-sided look. So these are the two that I'm going to be using. This is um, Hobby Lobby's cotton yarn, and this is sugar and cream. So um, the first thing in the pattern it tells you to do is to chain 30. So I'm going to chain 30, and um, I'll be back when I get my 30 chains on. So I have 20 chains so far. This is 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 7, 8, 9, 30. So this is 30 chains. Okay, the next thing it tells you to do is to insert the hook. It's kind of hard to show this. Let me see if I can turn the camera down so I can see. It's to insert the hook in the second chain from the, from the hook, which is a normal crochet thing that you do. Normally you would do that. And then you bring up a loop. Um, the difference with the crow hook is that I'm going to be bringing, I'm going to be inserting my hook uh, in each chain and bringing up a loop, but I'm going to be leaving the loops on the hook. This is similar to Tunisian crochet or if you've ever done the Afghan, uh, Afghan stitch and crochet. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go all the way across and just draw up a loop and all the loops will be left on the hook. So I'll do that and I'll be back. Okay, so there are my 30 stitches on my hook. Now let's see what it says to do next. Um, okay, and it says, um, drop your main color, which is the screen I'm working with, and turn your work. So you slide the stitches down to this end, and you turn your work, and then you attach your second color, which is this color that I'm using. As you can tell, I'm not, I'm not a uh, experienced tutorial giver. Um, so it just says to place your yarn on the hook. So I'm going to make a little slip knot, put that on the hook. And um, so and it says to yarn over and draw through two loops. This one 
spin this one. And then you, you just pull your hook through the next two, the next two, the next two, and so on. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm just bringing my thread through like that, grabbing it, and I'm kind of turning the hook so that I can get it through the loops. And you do that all the way across. So I'll be back after I'm done with that. So now this is what this looks like. So in this row, the next row you're going to do, you're left with one, one loop on the hook. Um, you don't turn the hook, you keep it in the same direction. And if you can see, there's these bars across here. And that's what I'm going to be inserting my hook under for the next row. So I'm going to be, this is really difficult to show, but I'm going to be putting it under this bar, the second bar, and bringing it through and keeping it on the hook. This is And so I'm going to be going all the way across, picking up those bars, or going under the bar and, and picking up the yarn and passing it through the bars so that it looks like this. So I'm going to be putting it through all of these bars. And uh, I'll see you when I'm done with that. Okay, so I picked up all of the stitches by going under these bars. And you should always have 30 stitches. Um, you know, you should always wind up with the same number of stitches. So now that I've done that, it's time for me to slide my stitches to the other end, turn my work, and now I'm gonna pick up the green thread. Okay, so now it's time to work with the green thread. So the first one you pull through the first stitch, just one stitch, and then yarn over and pull through both stitches. Come on. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And again, it's I'm at an angle. I'm not a <laughs> don't have my camera set up the way it, I should to show you. Probably should be over my shoulder looking at it this way. But this is just a quick down and dirty little demonstration. It's not really a tutorial, just a demonstration. If you've never worked with a crow hook, what it what it looks like, and sort of how you use it. Um, if you're familiar with crochet, you probably won't have a problem doing that. Um, I will uh, link, I found a really good tutorial um, on it, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'll link that uh, YouTube tutorial for you to, to watch if you're interested in crow hooking. But um, it's, it's neat. Uh, you know, one side is going to look like this. The other side is going to be like that, so it's it gives you the the double sided effect. So that's my little demo on crow hooking. See you in a minute. Or back to the show. Okay, I'm going to show you some works in progress. Um, for Christmas, I 
decided to try and engage my, my daughter to learn how to knit. And uh, so I got, I put together a kit, a beginner knit, beginning knit, knitter kit. <laughs> Uh, I actually tried to order one from um, from Knit Picks. They actually have a kit that you can buy. It comes in a nice box with some knitting needles, an instructional book, and a pattern for the beginner knitter. And I ordered it, but um, it never came in. Um, I wanted it for Christmas, and it didn't deliver for Christmas. And then I got a notice a couple of days before Christmas that it was on back order and they probably wouldn't get it in so the order was canceled so I decided I would put together my own kit and which I did so I went to Michael's I bought some nice yarn and needles and a beginner uh, beginner knitter book <laughs> and uh, which had some nice little patterns in it and I wrote a little note a little note in the card and said I would love for you to learn how to knit and I really would love for her to learn because I think I just I just think it's such a, a beautiful craft and I would like to sort of have a legacy of passing down my craft. Um, I've tried of course to teach Jen uh, to crochet and to knit before but I kind of think that she's ready now to do this. So I have seen her a couple of times since Christmas and she's actually doing it. Um, and, and the work that she's doing is really coming out nice. And she even, she's, she's knitting and she's purling, which is very, very good. So I decided to, she's making um, a, a cowl or a scarf, and this was uh, one of the patterns in the book that she got. But I found it, also found it on Ravelry, and it's called the Beginner Friendly Cowl or Scarf. And that's what it looks like. And it's really a neat pattern, actually. It's um, a 30 row pattern. So it's, it, it keeps your interest and um, it's some seed stitch, some uh, ribbing, purling, and knitting. Um, I decided to do one too. And I'm, this, this yarn is, um, is alpaca. It's 100% alpaca. I don't remember the brand of this. If I can find it, I will put it in the show notes or across the screen. But it's really pretty luxurious. Don't usually like to knit with alpaca. Um, just don't like the the material sometimes that it makes. It's very drapey and loose. Um, but I'm, I'm really liking this. Um, I love the color of this. It's, it's like a uh, brown, like a tan and white mixed together. It's really, let me get a better idea there. But it's very soft and uh, I'm liking it. Um, the pattern keeps my interest even though it's a beginner pattern. And Hopefully, Jen and I will have matching scarves. <laughs> so that's my first work in progress. Okay, second work in progress. I just started these um, pair of socks. No, nothing special about them. Plain vanilla, my usual pattern. Um, cuff down, afterthought heel. The yarn, I love the yarn. It's Madeline Tosh. Isn't that pretty? 
It's Twist Light, and the name of the colorway is Nighthawk. 75% nylon, 25%, I'm 75% merino wool, 25% nylon. Yeah, Madeline Tosh, and it's Nighthawk. Look at all those colors in there, though. It's, this is the way it's knitting up. It's really cool. That's my second work in progress. I'm using a size zero, which is what I usually use, 40 inch. I'm doing it magic loop. It's my normal way of doing socks. My next work in progress, I am doing the close to you shawl, which I have made before. And I really love the shawl. And, um, so did my sister. <laughs> so she took it home with her. So I decided I wanted to make one for myself. Um, this is the yarn I'm using, my sparkly yarn. Some um, hints of yellow and taupe. And the yarn is um, Chelsea Yarns. And this is Chelsea Lux. Um, and it's her Chelsea Lux Glitter, 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Stellina. And this color is called Flying Finch. That's Chelsea's yarn. This is Flying Finch. It's really nice. And working on it, working a little bit here and there on this and that. I just, you probably understand that. It's coming out nice. Well, that's my second work in progress. Okay, my next work in progress is a project that I've been wanting to do and decided this weekend that I was going to jump in and do it. I had seen someone on Instagram post a picture of her um, project, and I, I wanted I, it looked really nice, and I decided, um, it, you know, I wanted finally wanted to do it, and that one of the big reasons is well, it's the cozy memory blanket. Let me just say that, and I, like you, I'm sure, we buy so much sock, hand dyed sock yarn. Now it, they usually come in what, like 100 gram skeins. I don't use 100 grams to make a pair of socks. I may use 60 grams, maybe 70, um, but I have so much leftover sock yarn that's not enough to make another pair of socks and I wouldn't want to make another pair of socks out of the same yarn. So I have all these bits and pieces of leftover sock yarn. Um, I decided, um, when I think when I first started this podcast a year ago, I decided I was going to do the granny stripe. And this is how far I've gotten with that. And I decided that I didn't like doing the granny, granny stripe, so it's been laying in my closet, not doing anything. And I thought maybe the cozy memory blanket would be more to my liking. I struggled with this all weekend long. I could not figure out how the squares went together because you add them as you go. And I couldn't just look at it and say, oh, that's how it goes. So, I mean, I found a pattern, a couple of patterns and ideas on, on how to do it. Um, and I was really struggling with it. I would start it, take it apart, start it, take it apart. And I think one of the reasons was I was trying to do it out of sock yarn. And this is what I put together. Don't, do not like this at all. It's very drapey and flimsy, um, which I guess is okay. And maybe it'll look okay once, uh, if I ever finished it, the 
problem I'm having is even though it's all classified as sock yarn, as you know, all sock yarn is not the same. So for instance, this square hair, I like this material that this um, yarn made. I don't remember whose it is or you know where it came from. But it's a nice, just sturdy enough and it, it makes a nice fabric. This one is nice yarn also, but it doesn't have the same feel and texture when I knit it like this one did. So I, I think that's the problem I'm having. I just don't like the way the different textures of uh, sock yarn are going together in this in this blanket. If it was all the same, I'd probably like it better. But anyway, I was still I was <laughs> so that was my one issue. And then I couldn't figure out how to make the squares all go in the same direction. So like if you see the center, this all pointing in the same direction. Well, this one is pointing. Let's see if, it, if I could turn it this way. That's right, but this one is not. This one should be going up this way, and it's going up this way. So I was really frustrated with this. Um, finally found a tutorial. First of all, I decided I'm not going to make it out of sock yarn. I'm going to make it out of the tons of acrylic yarn that I have left over. And again, tons of acrylic yarn, you know, Red Heart or Hobby Lobby. And it just was easier for me to, to, to picture how the squares went together with the thicker yarn. So here's my start of my Cozy Memories blanket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all solid to be, you know, the bottoms are all going to be solid. And then I'm going to put a, a different color in the top triangle. So that's kind of going to be my pattern. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> it's um, going to look very homey, homemade, whatever you want to call it. But I think I, I think I'm gonna like doing it so I can just pick it up, uh, do a square every once in a while. And I thought I would do, you know, put, set a goal for myself to do, I don't know, three squares a week or something like that. And, and I don't expect this to be a long term, I mean a short term project. Um, I'll show it to you every once in a while to show you how far I've gotten. And, or you may never see this again, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I think the interesting thing to me was trying, was finally figuring it out or learning it, actually, not figuring it out, but learning it. And once I learned it, I was very proud of myself. And um, the tutorial that I found was, um, it, it was a YouTube tutorial and by simply more crafting, and I'll put that across the screen, and her, <clears throat> her Ravelry name uh, is Maureen0722, and she's on Instagram as simply more crafting, and the tutorial was, it was, it's a YouTube tutorial called How to Knit a Sock Yarn Memory Blanket, No Counting, and I'll put all of that in the show notes, but I just, um, I just wanted to thank Maureen because it was very helpful. The video was very helpful, step by step, and it was just what I needed to start my cozy memories blanket. And I hope to, I hope, it, yeah, I hope I do work on it every once in a while. Okay, I don't. Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a knit along, a make along that. I am co-hosting with Victoria from Victoria Knits Podcast and Wendy from Baba Yaya Contest uh, Podcast. I'm really off today. Rico's on my mind. Um, 
But we're hosting a, a make along and it's uh, the theme of it is um, something that you have been to make something that you've been inspired um, that you've seen in a movie or a TV show um, that you know it, it can be an inspiration it can be uh, a knitted item that you've seen or a crocheted item that you thought you might like to make um, I hope I'm explaining that correctly I'm not gonna cut this out I'm just gonna keep going here so anyway the name of the make along is knit flicks make along you can find all the details and I promise a better explanation in our Ravelry group so each one of us Victoria knits um, Baba Yaya Wendy um, and myself have set up a chatter thread in our Ravelry groups. We each have Ravelry groups for our podcast. So in the chatter thread, you will see a, a detailed <laughs> description of the make along um, and what the rules are and when it starts and stops and all of the details. Um, so we each have a chatter thread. Victoria, only Victoria from Victoria Knits is going to have a completed items thread. So if you, when you finish your object, you will post it in Victoria's um, finished object thread for the Knitflix now. <clears throat> the three of us are going to be giving prizes. So there are going to be three prizes picked out of the um, finished objects thread and we're also going to pick um, one prize out of the chatter threads <sighs> did you get all of that <laughs> I hope so um, what I'm giving away one of the prizes that I'm giving away uh, oh also all each one of us the prizes that we're giving away are they're going to be coming from our respective locations or states from makers from our respective locations or and states so for instance i'm giving away um a beautiful skein of yarn from um toad hollow yarns and they are from new jersey and though they are the crafty toads they have a podcast too i love those ladies that's helen and mary beth and this beautiful yarn is going to be a prize, one of the giveaways. Um, this is from their Narnia collection. And this one is Queen Lucy. It's beautiful. So that's going to be one of the, the main prizes um, from the completed objects thread. I'm also going to be giving away a project bag and I think it's going to be a Toad Hollow project bag. I'm pretty sure it is, but it's going to be from a maker from New Jersey. So you're going to be getting a project bag and the yarn from the completed objects thread. The chatter thread, I haven't decided what I'm going to be giving away yet, but it's going to be a nice prize. So I hope you, you all join. It's, it's, it, you, it can be any kind of object hat, sweater anything that you want to make that you can relate somehow to a movie or a tv show so those are the details for the netflix make along i want to show you what i'm making so i'm making a sweater and um the the sweater and I'm gonna put a picture in here of where my idea came from. Um, the pattern that I'm making is the, the Gramps sweater from um, Tin Can Knits. And um, I was inspired to make this by um, an episode in Call the Midwives. And it was their Christmas episode from 2017. And so this is how far I've gotten so far on the sweater. 
so I've separated for the sleeves and now I'm just working on the body and it's a lot of stockinette so I can only just do so much I think that's why I have all these other projects started um, but the yarn I'm using is um, Barocco Vintage and I don't think I have the colorway here let's see This is color 5137. <laughs> this is what it looks like. It's showing gray on the screen. And when I bought the yarn, I thought that it was gray. But as I'm knitting it, it has more of a, like a moss green color and it's not really showing that way on on the camera but it's more greenish than gray it's like a greenish gray i the gramp sweater has a, a sh like a shawl collar and a, a button band and the shawl collar and button band and the cuffs are different are different colors than the main body of the of the sweater so ross and i went on a um a yarn shopping trip because I wanted to get a contrasting color for the shawl, for the collar, and for the um, button band. So these are the two colors. Now I picked out one and Ross picked out one. Can you guess who picked out which one? I'll let you figure it out. But they're both the same Barocco Vintage. And this one, or this one. Maybe you can help us out with that. So that's it for my works in progress and for all the administration stuff. I'm struggling here today trying to keep trying to be coherent but um, in case you're new to the podcast um, I just wanted to let you know um, that where the name of the podcast comes from and the name of the podcast is Joey Scarf and it is dedicated to my son Joe um, who passed away six years ago from colon cancer and I in the in the beginning episodes I introduced Joe to all of my viewers and hopefully you, uh, you got to know him and it was very helpful for me to be able to talk about Joe and um, talk about him and happy happy with happy memories um, and I've been thinking a lot about Joe lately and the picture that keeps flashing across into my mind is of his smile and his um, just uh, just how happy he was on the last in his later life which was a very early life um, he was uh, only 36 I think when he passed away and and I just have this flash of him coming into the house and with a smile on his face and a baby in his arms. So I always want to mention Joe on my podcast in one way or another because I, I, I just do. So I think that's it for, for today. I'm going to try and see if I can convince Ross to come and say hello. So hold on a second. Okay, look who I found. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, so what's been going on with you? Oh, well, I've been reading uh, Popular Mechanics uh, about survival. Survival of? Surviving the next disaster. Oh, well, that's lovely. <laughs> You know, hurricanes, floods, yeah. tornadoes. Mm -hmm. That's enough of that. <laughs> Loud dogs next door. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I was 
telling everyone about Puerto Rico. And right now he's very quiet, but what do yes. you think about Puerto Rico? Well, <laughs> he's Puerto Rico. I mean, <laughs> we love him dearly. Uh, it's a very difficult decision to make and what All of that. Do you think we're making a decision? Every minute. We, we stall, we get involved, we say yes, we share responsibility. We oh, do us? We, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I want to get ready for the next event disaster. Nice uh, no, it's, it's, it's kind of tough and it's one of the, it's a difficult decision to make for your buddy. No, it's not. I, I don't think no, of it as a, a decision. I think I'm, I'm, my mindset is trying to find out what's wrong with him to see if there's something that we can do to help him live a better life, whatever he has left, because he is 16 and a half years old. Everybody does know that we're talking about a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Not our next door neighbor. Not our next door neighbor, no. <laughs> Had enough problems. He has. Who? Rico? Next door. Oh. <laughs> and Rico. So you've been struggling with a back back pain? Yeah, it's... Uh, Is it better it's today? One of, it's one of those... It's one of those things I've known about for years, just waiting for it to mature into something that I... I can identify and say, hey, it hurts like hell back there. <laughs> Fix it. Oh. No, it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough one. Yeah. Well, you seem better today, though. Well, I, I only had one, one incident today, and that's when I thought I, locked, oh my I lost God. my keys and <laughs> searched, <laughs> searched for the floor of the car. Yeah. Well, well, anyhow. Anyhow. Here, here I am uh, at... Joey's Scarf, episode 21. Oh, how did I get How here? did you know that it was episode 21? Well, I, I could tell everybody, but... <laughs> yes, it is episode 21. How about that? Well, I think that you have some fans out there, so oh, I thought you nice. might want to make a, an appearance. Hi. <laughs> Hi. We've been kind of housebound between the dog and the weather, and I'm going crazy. I think it's more the weather. Mm. Well, well the, Rico's been pretty good. He's he's still a good camper, a good trooper. Oh, he is. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, if we consider what he's going through, yeah. which we don't even know. We don't know. But anyhow. Anyway, so anything else going on? Uh, yes, I'm dreading the fact that I'm going to be erasing my computer with all of the... So wait, start from the beginning. Uh, Where is your computer? My computer is at Mac Sultans. Oh, what you have, so you have a desktop Macintosh. Right. And it's, how old is it? We bought it in 2008. Mm -hmm. So it's 10 years old with 10 year old operating systems, memory, hard drive and everything else and it's slowed down to less than a snail's pace. So I had to take, take it into the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> First we took Rico, now we're taking your computer. Uh, just never ends. That's true, yeah, but that with the computer, it's one shot, you pay, you, it's done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, anyhow, I'm replacing hard drives. Why are you talking to the table? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> look up when you're when you're. <laughs> look I, look I at I these people. They want to see your lovely face okay. and your lovely eyes. And there you go. That. <laughs> there you go. So anyhow, uh, over the years, I've just abused the hell out of the machine, and it needs some perking up. That's all. It's, yeah. It's like uh, our roads and highways and bridges in, in the United States. <laughs> I mean, our computer needs 
TLC also. All right. So it's it's a way, but what they're doing is they erase everything. I mean, there will be nothing. I think Good there was fresh a, start. just a cursor, <laughs> a blinking cursor. No, I'm serious. I mean, nothing else. But, well, okay. All that we have are the things that we backed up, which was everything. Right. You just <laughs> all of our, our song library. I had sixteen, seventeen hundred songs. Really? Yeah. Oh. You know how many songs I have on mine? One. <laughs> That's right. And I can tell you the name of it. What is it? So can most of the people out there. <laughs> it's the intro to Joey's Scar. That's right. What else do I need? Which is really kind of cool. I like, I like, it. Mm -hmm. I really like it. So what did you think of the Super Bowl yesterday? I'm not terribly interested in following any teams but I'm interested in watching good football. That was an exciting game mm -hmm. for a change. Yeah. Uh, I don't follow football, but yeah. I do like watching a good game. I couldn't wait for it to be, I, I, it, it, I mean, I don't. I almost could have shut it off. But. Yeah, I mean, we are in, actually we, where we are in, <laughs> in Southern Jersey, it's, it's Philly country, this is, all Philadelphia Eagle fans around here, even though we're in New Jersey, we're close it's enough <clears throat> close enough to Philly that it's it's prime Philadelphia. Al although in this community, a lot of people are from they're North. All <laughs> they're all New Yorkers, so they're probably <laughs> Giants and Jets fans. They but are. if you step out of our community, the people that the locals around here, it's Philadelphia Eagles. So, uh, but I couldn't wait for it to be over because I couldn't wait for the episode, This Is Us. Now, oh. we can't talk about it because some people might not have seen it. That's true. Yeah. But I just love that show and I think they did a really good job. They did a bang up job with it. Yeah. They really did. I, I wasn't, it didn't bring me to tears, but did well, it? Well, no, you, can't, you, you know what's gonna happen. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, very, very but I was reading. Well, I don't. I don't want to talk about it in case in case people have seen it or have not seen it. But and then it's on again on Tuesday. Now they're getting greedy. <laughs> <laughs> they have to pay through the nose for uh, for uh, commercials. Then, oh, yeah. and these well, I think these advertisers. It's a pretty popular show. I, so I think so. So that's that, and. Uh, we are, what are we having for dinner tonight? D didn't, you, didn't you make that uh, meatloaf? Not yet. <laughs> I've been busy with my people over here. Oh, okay. My dating people. Oh, I saw something interesting today. I was watching The View, okay. and um, the show, what is it, Homeland? Homeland? Yeah. Claire Danes, the main, uh -huh. the main, the actress that plays the main, the main character. She just started to go on Instagram. She just, just oh, joined really? Instagram, right. And do you know what she does on Instagram? Knits? Yes, she's a knitter. And all of her posts are knitting posts. How did you know this? <laughs> How, you're, you're sitting here with, okay, okay. Now see, see where my hand is right now? Yeah. I tell you, you don't have to turn. Okay. Right next to me, there's a stack. <laughs> it's not that high. Of, of yarn. It's next to me. Yeah. No, it isn't. <laughs> there. <laughs> so, no, I, yeah, I, I just, how did you just guess that? I just guessed that. Oh, yeah. Right so, out of the clear blue. So, yeah, so, so she says all she does is post pictures. Pictures of, of knit, knitting stuff, so I'm going to have to follow her now. Maybe she'll have to follow you. Maybe she would. Wouldn't that be cool? That's right. Yeah. But anyway, they... Then you could give her she, hints. She, says, she said that she has all these uh, gadgets, like lighting, you know, like the lights that you wear around your uh -huh. neck, because, you know, there's a lot of downtime, I guess, between shots and... So she, uh, so she knits, and I, I can't wait to see what she makes. But anyway, the, the View people gave her these ginormous 
knitting needles and this big thing of, of and she was so excited. She was so excited to get that. Well, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's neat. neat. So. I know that there's a knitter out there in television. That's famous. That is. That's famous. Oh, there are a lot of famous knitters. We just don't know who they are. That's true. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look on Homeland now to see if there's any things that she has knit. Do you think they they'd advertise it? No, they won't advertise, but she may be wearing things that she, she has might knit. It. I don't know. She doesn't knit on the I show because spies don't knit on. You know, that's too. Well, see, maybe she's knitting because there, there's a whole new uh, detective genre yeah. or a secret agent genre that involves knitting needles. <laughs> you never can tell. You never can tell. So I think that's about it. Anything else? You have anything? No, anything to talk about? Or I never have anything to talk oh, about. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get po political. No, you're not. No, I'm not. Not, not on my show. You're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> then I guess there's nothing else to talk about. <laughs> oh no, there's there's an awful lot. So we hope that the next time we podcast, that we will have. Good news about Rico, that he's back to his old puppy self. Yes. He is old. I mean, there was a time last year, he would just f drag along. I think he had something, Lyme disease. Maybe. Can a dog get Lyme disease? I think they can. I think so, too. But he, he, he was just dragging around. And then he seemed to perk up, though. Yeah. And what's interesting is he eats. He eats like a horse. Everything. Mm. He eats everything. Maybe as a tapeworm. God. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I hope not. All right. Okay. So, so, so now I, my computer is also 10 years old. So now. After we finish this up, I'm going to be editing for the next three hours and uploading and downloading and. See, that's the that's the reason for you to get a new machine. Yeah, I might be getting a new machine. But uh, what we should have done, I, well, for what it's costing me to rebuild my machine, it's it's negligible. Yeah. So uh, when the time comes, we'll get rid of everything, and get you a new computer and me a new computer. Okay. Or a new laptop, or if I if I get right now, <clears throat> excuse me, I have two hundred and sixty some two hundred and sixty subscribers. If I get to five hundred subscribers, I'm going to get a new computer. Okay, well that's, that's nice. <laughs> so are, that'll be never. Are your subscribers that'll going to never. pay for this? Yeah, no. <laughs> that's why we have to keep Rico around here. <laughs> <laughs> so he can work. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, well, thank you very much for inviting me in. I really didn't expect it today. Oh, you didn't? You weren't prepared? Were you dressed mm -hmm. properly? You combed your hair. I did have to. <laughs> it's my own hair. It is? It is. <laughs> Let me <laughs> see. Like, yes, that's your is. hair. That's your hair. That's this is my hair. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay that's about so it. Let's hit that meatloaf. You gonna I, make it? I, I told you I would go out and buy this stuff because I love the way you made your meatloaf. Wonder if you can make a meatloaf in the instant pot. Well, I just bought a, a magazine that's for not slow the right, cooking. Yeah, it's not the right one. Well, you can do anything in the instant pot that you can do in the slow cooking. I'm going to look it up and say, all right, enough of this silliness. Okay. All right, see you later. So long. Bye. I said, okay, do it again. See you later. You want me to do it again, too? See you later. So, I, so we'll see you next time. I don't know when that will be, but... Soon enough. Gotta get My clicker's not working. Oh, because I'm not pointing it the right way now. Okay, try this again. Click.